welcome to the next episode of Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Um, I am your host, Davey Beauchamp, and I'm joined with two <laughs> two extremely awesome co-hosts. We have Clayton. And I'm Angela. And we have sex on the camera running it because she was slack and got uh, mono from snogging too many people. Um, Who's so, bronchitis? Yeah, whatever. Same difference. And we are here to <laughs> talk about <coughs> The Girl Who Waited, which kind of themes this episode where we have made all of you guys wait for a real long time for the next episode. And yes, I have gotten your Facebook messages and emails complaining about n no new episodes. Well, we're fixing that here and now. So, opening thoughts about The Girl Who Waited. Um... I think that it might be one of the darkest episodes of the season. Yeah. And I think I'm going to start crying again. Um, <laughs> I just think it was very interesting that they got around doing an episode with Matt Smith where his doctor is the unambiguous villain of the episode. Oh, totally. It's kind of been an underlying tone, though, for this whole season. Oh, yeah. The doctor's the villain. Yeah, every bit of trouble he was really just caused for himself. Yeah, but doesn't the doctor cause most of the trouble himself? Except when Cybermen or dialects are involved? Yeah. Even then he causes the own, his trouble. Because back a few episodes when he revived the new Daleks, he caused that himself. Well, yeah, I mean, he has rewritten their timeline countless times now. I've actually lost count. I actually have the handbook, too, and I, I don't even know how many times he's he has uh, altered their... Uh, history but we're talking about the girl who weighed it yeah um very dark episode a uh, very amazing episode i thought um i think they finally cemented i mean you, you can't even question it now y even though i thought they had already had already done this that amy loves only rory oh yeah um we don't need another does amy love rory story anymore. Not at all. Um, and I, I, think, I think we're good there. I, I don't want to see another this one of those. This goes more into just though her childhood fantasy of he's always going to come back for her. He's going to come back and save her. He's going to save her. Because that whole time she's like, I waited for you. I waited for you. You were, good. You were supposed to come back and get me. So yeah, this which, actually goes on into the later episode. Yeah, the next episode. Yes. Um, quite a bit um, with, with that. Um, I, thought it was, I thought it was quite amazing. Because, I mean, we saw the Doctor as the villain. And he is clearly the villain in this episode. Yeah, it's just... He actually manages to hit this level of dark that I think actually manages to outdo some of Tennant's worst. Yeah. Well, this this episode, in a strange way, very much reminded me of a Sylvester McCoy episode. Huh. Because there were times when Sylvester was extremely dark. And, you know, there were times they actually hinted that, you know, he isn't as good as we had always thought. Because yeah. with Classic Who, you know, you really got, you know, the Doctor is the hero time and time again. Every once in a while you get a, a bit darker episode. But, I mean, I think this definitely played, in my in a lot of ways, Classic Who, especially I think some of the Sylvester McCoy episodes, that he is extremely, he can be a very extremely dark and menacing figure, which I think also goes back to the... Demon Run episode where River saying, you know, the Doctor is defined as a warrior in some in some cultures. Mm -hmm. You know, he's willing to be dark. He's willing to be evil when he needs to be. Yeah, it's just he manages to. Uh, he leaves one of his companions to die. Yeah, which. Which wasn't really his intention, though. It was his intention all along. He totally well, was. Well, no, okay, okay, at the end, but when he went to go and save her, that was not his intention for that whole time thing, timey-wimey, yeah. to happen, and there be... He wasn't um, expecting there to be two Amy Pons. Spoilers! Two Amys. Yeah, but once he realizes there's a second one, he knows exactly what he's going to do. I think yeah, it's pretty clear from the way that he behaves. Oh yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, he, I mean, he clearly knew that he was going to have to kill one of the Amy's. Yeah, um, which wouldn't be the first time. I mean, I think, I think 
Um, I think this really parallels the Peter Davison episode where they leave Adric to die. Um, and like Tegan and Issa are like, you have to go back for him. You have a time machine. You can do it. But the doctor's like, no, it, it's already happened. You know, it, it's already set. I can't go back. I can't change things. I mean, he now has to die when he dies. Um, and there's also been one or two other companions that have died. I, um, and I don't, unfortunately, I don't recall exactly who they were or how they died. But they were, you know, quite tragic. But it was another circumstance where he couldn't. But of course... The big difference here is, I mean, he basically came in a murder, in, in a sense. Oh, yeah. Um, where in the other times, he just couldn't change the events that have already occurred. Um, so, I mean, that's that's the one difference. And, I mean, I, th I thought it was great. I thought everybody got to really show their acting chops in this episode. Oh, my gosh. Karen Gillian is amazing. Yeah. And it's another great Rory episode, too. Oh, phenomenal Rory episode, especially, you know, when at the end where it's just like, um, you're turning me into you. Yeah. There's... What I love so much about that episode is just the way the way he treats each of the Amy's. He never hesitates. He knows exactly what he wants to do. He wants to save both of them, and he doesn't know really what that means, but he knows that he has to because he loves both of them because they're both Amy. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much time they've spent apart, he's still going to love her. Yeah. So we talked about what we like about the episode. Because, I mean, there's a lot in this episode that's just absolutely amazing. From the acting performances, because I, th I think they're top-notch this episode. Because, I mean, we got to see so many different sides of all the characters. Mm -hmm. um, what didn't we like about this episode? That's a really hard question for me. Because this is one of my favorite episodes of this season. Damn good episode. So. Actually, I think these next three episodes, um, The Girl Who Waited, God Complex, and... Closing time are three of the best this season. It was pointed out to me online that in the scene where they break <clears throat> the Mona Lisa over one of the robots' heads, the Mona Lisa is canvas when it shouldn't be. Right. Most so, people I mean, don't know that. That's unless it's a replica. That's, that's like the Hitler comment about isn't he left-handed? He was right-handed in the episode or whatever. Yeah, I mean, oh, was he? I missed that. <clears throat> yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be a replica, and plus, they might think that's the original. I mean, there are, there are ways to at least explain that one. Oh, yeah, it's just, that's about all I've got yeah. when it comes to complaints. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, this, this one's really, really hard to find anything to complain about, because it is such a solid, a very solid episode all the way through. Um, but now the real question is, are we going to see old Amy again? No. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Not even for the 50th? No. No. You don't think the silence might find a way of bringing her back? No. no. I, I think it's just a one-off thing, and there's there's no real point in bringing her back. Uh, see, I can disagree. I mean, if you want to talk about a woman designed to kill the doctor that would want to see him dead... Actually, I take it back. There is one big complaint that I have. What is it? Um... I don't think that it really gets proper follow-up from Rory. I agree. Amy uh -oh. has no reason to suspect that anything went wrong, but Rory witnessed it with his own eyes, and by the next episode, he and the Doctor are basically okay again. And I get that they probably did that just because they were really going fast toward the end of the season, and they didn't really have time for that extended plot arc, but it seems like something well, that really needed to be resolved. There's, there's always a possibility, you know, we could get a flashback episode, because we really don't know how much time occurs between the two. Yeah. Um, and there's there's also a chance there could be a cut scene that we haven't seen yet, that That's might true. be on the, on the, on the DVD, really, Blu-ray releases. Um, but but I agree with you. Um, there, there has to be more. Unless, of course, Rory doesn't do anything to complicate the relationship because of Amy. Maybe. But the Doctor does a damn good job of complicating things with the next episode, God Complex, with him and Amy. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of still a follow-up to this. Just in a sense. With a different Amy. Yeah. Yeah, it, 
they do a good job of handling the doctor's side of that in God Complex, but yeah. Rory's reaction to it seems sort of left out. Yeah. The closest um, that I think we really could do a response is that him not remembering what happened in the in the season finale is, you know, in terms of, you know, the whole structure of that episode, I think it's very important that, you know, he has an entire different set of memories, an entire different lifetime for him to think that preventing the doctor's death is a good thing. Or, I mean, there's also there's also the possibility that one reason why he could sort of forgive the doctor quicker than, let's say, you or I, is you gotta, you also understand how old, the, how old Rory is. People yeah. forget he lived a thousand years. He remembers that time. Not all the time, clearly. But, you know, he might also be one of those people, you know... Two thousand years. He's twice as old as the doctor. Well, that's if you believe the doctor's age. Because rule number one, the doctor lies. Yeah. And there are episodes in the Colin Baker years that already puts him over a thousand. Oh, I know. So, you know, it's... The doctor lies. And he, of course, you know, a man of that age, you know, is he really going to say how old he is? You know, kind of like a woman. I don't care. Well, I'm just saying. I, I mean... I mean, it, it, it's an interesting thing. I would like to see some sort of scene, which we might still get. I mean, this, this is Moffat. Um... And he does like to come back and revisit things. So we could just hope that we're going to get something in the future. Mm -hmm. So any final words about this, this episode? This episode made me cry so much. Phenomenal episode. My father was laughing at me the entire time I was watching this episode because I was just bawling. This episode didn't make me cry, but it did make me very, very sad. Yeah, damn good episode. So, okay, we've had Pirate Amy... We've had Samurai Amy, we've had Policewoman Amy, we've heard about Nun Amy. We've had Robot Amy. We've had Robot Amy. We've um, had Old Amy. We've had Old Amy. What Amy are we going to see next, do you think? Hmm. Fish Amy. Fish Amy? Yes, with well, gills. Technically, we almost had that during the Vampires of Venice. Oh, yeah. Good point. So I guess we'll leave everybody on that note. Um, and until next time, uh, you this is. Just put that below in the YouTube comments. Tell us what type of Amy you think you should see. Nice, yes. Or on Facebook or wherever, wherever. Um, well, this is Gallifrey. Oh, we also Radio. saw Schoolgirl Amy in the flashbacks in Let's Kill Hitler. And they talked about a few different Amys in the Christmas special. Yeah. 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 Well, this is for <laughs> we, should, we should leave it there. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, until Mario. next time, this is Galafade Private Radio signing off. <laughs>